What's up? This is a video about a uh, a budget whirlwind barbarian, and I'm really just gonna take the gear on my barbarian and uh, just ch switch it with really shitty stuff. <laughs> so this is just my normal whirlwind barbarian that you've seen on uh, on every every video I made, the one video that I made with him. Um, and in general, I'm just going to use like really easy rune words to find, uh, smoke for resistances, um, for one. There's actually a couple different helmets you can use. Uh, so maybe I should have prepared this ahead of time, but I didn't, so whatever. So essentially, okay, so here's, here's the central idea behind this video is... A budget whirlwind barbarian build that essentially what I imagine is someone's rolling their first sorceress and they make it to Nightmare Mephisto and they run Nightmare Mephisto 700 times. The gear that they're looking for there <laughs> and what they're likely to find. And maybe using that gear you can get pretty much all the way through the game um, to hell mode, you know, to and beat hell mode as well. So none of this budget shit using a uh, an oath rune word in a ethereal balrog blade or using duress you know and a uh, and a fucking you know elite unique you know maybe some elite uniques are are easier to find than others but uh that's not really budget to me um you know i i made a, a pretty budget version of uh of my fury druid and uh showed that off in a video a little while ago and now here's here's the whirlwind barbarian build and what i thought was cool about the whirlwind barbarian build um was that i kind of realized you you don't need a raven frost uh and that's one of the the most limiting factors in in most builds is that you you need cannot be frozen you don't necessarily need it on the whirlwind barbarian it just helps a lot um so we're going to swap out the Raven Frost and the Metal Grid that I use for Angelic, Amulet, and Ring. Uh, swap out the Duress for a Smoke Resistances. We're going to keep the Laying of Hands. That's the one pair of gloves, the one item on here that you, you can't get from uh, Nightmare Mephisto. Uh, you could, if you didn't have that, use a Venom Grip. It's pretty good. Life Steal, Crushing Blow, Poison Res. Um, but eventually, I think Laying of Hands is going to be probably needed in order to beat the game. Uh, you're going to keep String of Ears, which you can get from Nightmare Mephisto. Damage reduced and life steal again is fantastic. Um, if you don't have um, Mana Steal on your weapon, just use a Minald. I mean, if you if you have like a Mana Steal Resistance Ring, that's great. You know, for the purposes of being budget, since Minald is pretty easy to find, we're just gonna we're just gonna use Minald. Um, Goblin Toe, super easy to find, very budget. Um, so, I mean, that's most of the gear. The helm... Okay, so I was about to start talking about the helms when I got sidetracked on what the video is actually about. Uh, we're going to take the Anilis out of my inventory as well. And most of these these charms are, you know, they're, they're okay melee charms. They're not great with a couple lightning resistance charms thrown in there. Um, but... Uh, We'll, we'll see what resistances we, we end up with at the end, and then maybe we'll, we'll respec some shit. Um, so, depending on the weapon, we'll, we'll actually use, use Plug E to respec. But anyways, the three helms. So the three helms, we've got Vamp Gaze, G-Face, Talrashes. They're all actually basically end-game end viable um, helms. I use the Vamp Gaze as my actual end-game helm in general. <laughs> uh, Talrashes gives you a little bit more life and mana steal, a bigger bonus to life and resistances, uh, but it does not have the damage reduced. So overall, I think Vamp Gaze is a little bit better, but Talrashes, totally fine. Uh, G Face, one of the best melee helms. Um, pretty amazing that you can find this from Nightmare Mephisto. I think this is the one I'm going to wear right now, uh, just because I think it's a little bit more common than vamp gaze i tell rasha's you'll definitely find uh, you know that'll be probably the first one that you find out of these three uh, but it also is probably the worst so middle of the road we're gonna go g face which is maybe not even less 
superior than the VAMP case. It's just just different. Um, so, and then and then a, a couple of weapons that you could use. Um, you know, I showed off the rib cracker in my uh, my Fury Druid budget build. Uh, that is a 100% viable end game weapon to to use, especially upped with a shale in it. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple weapons that um, you could use, and my criteria for them is that I, either by socketing them with a shale or just normally they, they reach max whirlwind attack frames. Um, the rib cracker with a shale in it being one of those that reaches the max whirlwind attack frames as far as your attack speed goes. Uh, now obviously there are going to be better weapons than what I lay out here. Basically insert elite unique or insert high level rune word here to get like a better weapon. Uh, but these are ones that in general you could find relatively commonly from Nightmare Mephisto or early act one hell uh, that you know would just be solid choices to up eventually. So the Rube Cracker, I did a chaos run with this, totally viable, not as good as my Barner Star setup. Uh, but out of the weapons that I'm, I'm going to show you, it's actually probably the best. Um, because it, it does so much damage per hit, uh, as opposed to dual wielding, per se, a Butcher's Pupil and a Razor's Edge, uh, that when you have to deal with physical immunes and, uh, and souls using Berserk um, to just kind of s smash them in one hit is... Uh, yeah, essentially what I'm saying is I use Berserk for souls a lot of the time because they have such high physical resistance against physical attacks like Whirlwind that you kind of smash them in one hit with Berserk. So, um, Ribcracker, very good. Very good. Probably the best weapon and the and the most budget in a way because you only need to up one item instead of maybe two if you were to do a wield uh, like the Butcher's Pupil. But because I used it in the Fury Druid, I won't use it here. Uh, two other ones that you could use... Uh, the Cranked Vomir, um, Espadon, or whatever the, the sword is called, when you up it, it, it actually has decent damage. This is a pretty low roll, and you don't need to socket it. I put a skull in it, but I don't really use the weapon, but it's actually a solid enough weapon. Um, gives you gives you a little bit of extra defense with the damage reduced, uh, run to walk, run walk speed, uh, as well as slows target, so it's pretty cool. Uh, it does all right damage, and then you could also. So this is this is not something you can up, but just another relatively inexpensive option. If you did have an um rune and you didn't want to put it toward like a duress armor, make a crescent moon in one of these these blades. Um, that'll just give you a, a decent enough damage weapon with at least 200 enhanced damage. You could make it in a um, a uh, one second. In a legend sword, so legend swords uh, roll a max of three sockets. So if you just find one and use the cube, you'll probably get three sockets, and you can make um, a uh, uh, crescent moon um, rune, rune word in there that will have max whirlwind attack frames. So that might be a worthwhile thing to think about. And then the other one is the cold steel eye. Uh, once again, very easily just by itself hits uh, max whirlwind attack frames. It does decent damage. The problem with this one, especially if you try and pair the two, is that this one has a plus two range adder, I think, and this one has a zero range adder, so sometimes you're only hitting with, with one sword when you're whirlwinding people instead of two. I think that's how it works. Anyways, uh, I know that this one has a very short range, but uh, also does decent damage, has, you know, mana stolen as well as deadly strike. Um, so those are those are all sword options that you could go for. Uh, the Butcher's Pupil, kind of like your primary axe, uh, it does require a shale to hit max whirlwind frames, but the high deadly strike, the open wounds, um, just the solid damage in general, I mean, it, it actually does more damage than Barner Star. Um, I, I just think the Barner Star is superior for, for other reasons. Uh, the elemental damage, the attack rating... Um, you know, overall, I, I like that better, but, I mean, the Butcher's Pupil is, is very, very good. Um, so, I actually think I'm going to try and use the, uh, and the Razor's Edge, I'll pair that with it, does pretty good damage, doesn't need a, a Shale in it to reach max whirlwind frames, and similarly has high deadly strike, high damage, high open wounds, 
uh, and a pretty good chance to hit. So we'll use these two as my uh, as my primary um, weapons, and uh, I'm just going to respec real quick to axes instead of maces. Do 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 do. Axes. Yep, 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 yep. Whoops. Uh, really, I think I think because I'm I'm pretty high level, I'll I'll have some points left over that normally I would put into find item. I might just smash them into uh, natural resistance. If um, where is that? Where is that shit? There we go. Let's just see. Uh, make sure that we get we get at least 75 <laughs> lightning and fire res. How many did we end up with? Seven. You don't really need cold and poison res. They certainly help. And if I had like you know some more um, you know charm space or something, I, I could or I could swap out these charms. But in general, all right. So this is what we're looking at. It's about 7k attack rating. Not great. If we had something to leech mana on our weapons, we could use the other angelic's ring. Um, but that's that's okay. Damage is all right as well uh, with the Merc's might aura. That's going to help out a lot. You know, like I said in the last video, if you can get a Treachery, a Tal Raja's Helm, or a Rock Stopper, and then a Hon Sudan, Hon Sudan is just a decent weapon. Uh, but, I mean, this Ethereal Bone Hue is, like, fucking top tier. Actually, my Merc is, is actually probably better than I am on this character. <laughs> Not really, but it, he's he's good. Oh, on Switch, I just have Bow Sticks. Uh, I shopped these ones from Mala, but you can find them... It's pretty easy to find bow sticks. You'll find them anywhere. Uh, so I am pretty worried about souls. Uh, so we'll see how, how we deal with them. Um, I do think that uh, that using the G-Face is almost cheating in a way. Uh, because you, that single piece of gear increases your damage so much and it's such it's it's basically an end game piece of gear even if I'm calling it budget um, and and that for the sake of the video I probably should have used Tal's helm um, but uh, you know like I think these souls would probably be a lot harder to deal with if I didn't have the you know additional 35% crushing blow um, and 15% deadly strike. I imagine that um, this guy's boss kill will, will be actually pretty solid still because, uh, or maybe even better than my normal boss kill because I have more crushing blow um, due to the G phase. Uh, you do have less life leech though and, and mana leech and we are we're actually feeling the effects of that. I, I am having to use more potions than, than normal. Jesus Christ! Let me let me go grab the um, the Tal's helm because this this really does not feel like a budget gear setup. You know, like the smoke for resistances, like you know the shitty rings and amulets and whatnot. Like we're kind of crushing crushing these souls. I thought they were going to be way harder. Um, well, and I'll be honest, because because usually they are harder. Um, I, I did um, do a couple runs with the Tal's Helm instead of the G-Face. This is actually my first time doing a run with the G-Face. And, uh, and it's much easier with the G-Face. It really is. Ooh, this is going to suck. Oh my god. All right. You know what? This is a budget build. Uh, there are some things that, that the Barbarian is just not meant to fight. And, and a mass of, of blood witches is just one of those things. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> All right, so you'll see you saw how, how easily I was killing those those guys there. Let's uh, let's use the tall helm. see if our resource management gets a little better uh, but if our damage suffers for it. Yeah, so I can definitely feel it's a uh, Already taking a little bit longer to, to whirlwind through uh, through those infidels or assailants or whatever they're called. 
Ooh. Nice. Get some get some potions. Yeah, and once again, I mean like you know, if you if you used your uh normal and nightmare um sockets on just two butchers peoples, if you just happen to find those, I mean those are your end game weapons. As you see, I'm kind of crushing it with the with the butcher's pupil right now. And Razor's Edge is, is kind of annoying because its durability is so low, but is a really good weapon and, and not super hard to find. Um, so this first wave, not a problem. The second wave, without a Raven Frost, actually can get a little bit dicey. Um, you know what? Let's uh. And the reason for that is you get slowed from the cold and you get slowed from decrepify. And you can see that um, my my move speed is a fucking snail's pace, and I'm I'm not leeching a ton right now from these guys. Uh, so you know it's yeah it gets dicey. It gets dicey, <laughs> really does. And uh, we're just gonna hope that uh, I have enough life steal. Oh, come on. That, uh... That I don't get messed up by, uh, by this wave right here. Whoop. I actually totally missed my whirlwind right there. That was kind of humorous. I just did not. They were here and here, and I went over here. <laughs> good, good for me. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Yeah, 3,000 life. That's actually due to the extra life on the Tal's Helm. Uh, normally, I think I only have about 2,700. Uh, the, the extra life also from the... Um, from the, the Angelic's Amulet putting in work. So the uh, the fifth the fifth wave always pretty scary. Uh, you can see my, my life going down pretty pretty quickly there. Might just pull a juvie out. Um, my my mercenary really should not be this good. I don't know how he's surviving. He's just tanking like a motherfucker. But I'm doing decent damage to these guys too. Don't count me out. Don't count me out of this fight. Oh, Lister's immune to physical. Perfect. All right. Alright, okay. Alright, here we go. Thank god my Merc is a god. Uh, and your Merc could be a god too, with a rock stopper and a treachery. He won't be quite as good without an ethereal bone hue, but he'll be probably pretty good. Um, you know, I saw another video where someone used a, uh, a Reaper's Toll Merc to help deal with physical immunes, and that was considered to them a uh, budget. That is not actually budgets, I have to say. Um, oh, you know, now that we are using the, uh, the Tal's Helm, by the way, we could actually swap uh, the Manald Heal Ring off for either another Life Leech Ring or Resistance Ring uh, or the other Angelic's Ring to get up to about 10k attack ratings, what I think it would end up at. Man, Bale's clone is so fucking annoying. Alright, luckily we're actually doing uh we're doing okay on him. There we go. Alright, well no good drops. But overall, I mean, um Yeah, let's see. We got we got some some melee charms, melee charms, you know, really just attack rating charms. And once again, if you were using the uh, the Tal's Helm instead of the uh, the Gee Face, uh, you know, go ahead and go ahead and swap that that Menald heal off for uh, for the other Jesus. Where to go? There it is. The other Angelics, and you'll get you know that that 12k, that sweet sweet 12k attack rating. Um, 
really though if you you don't need charms I would really focus on um, just uh, just getting just getting life charms just getting life whatever whatever you can find it doesn't really matter like I said you know your, your resistances are, are pretty poor um, actually they're a little bit better with the 15 res from the Tal's helm as opposed to the uh, just the lightning resistance of, of the G face that I, that I socketed um, you know, like I said, Tal's helm totally an end vi like end game viable helm. You know, it's just there, there's it gets outclassed a little bit by some of the others, but it's good. Um, you know, your cold and poison res are actually at a decent, decent level uh, with that. Though G face will definitely offer you more damage. Yeah, I mean, you know, Lumrune not that high. Nightmare Mephisto, Nightmare you know, ugh, fucking normal Mephisto will drop Goblin Toes. Nightmare Mephisto will drop that. Nightmare Mephisto will drop that. Um, Hell and Ariel will drop that. Not super hard to find some of this stuff. It doesn't honestly. It doesn't doesn't look that much different than my normal Barbarian build. <laughs> And it, it worked well enough. Maybe I should just use the G face instead of uh, instead of the vamp gaze. Like maybe maybe I need to swap up my my shit. Maybe double butcher's pupil upped with shales is kind of the way to go. Um, who knows, man? But in any case, that's uh, that's the budget budget barbarian build uh, that I was kind of thinking of. Let me see if there's anything else I can. I can think of, you know, let's just go kill Travinkle, just to, uh, just for fun, see what that's like. We're pretty low on potions, so it'll, it'll be a good test. Oh, and their mana burn. That sucks. Alright, okay, okay. Oh, oh, my Merc died. My Merc died from all the Hydras. My Merc is a... Is a tank and a god, but unless they're uh, to everything except hydras. So yeah, like I said, uh, butchers people, these these axes, uh, very very good uh, at game weapons. I will be totally honest. I think I might have mentioned this. I can't remember, but I think the swords are probably the weakest options. Uh, the cold steel. I did do a couple chaos runs, or at least one, I think, with uh, testing out the swords, and, and they were much slower. Um, I mean, the damage is just not really comparable. Uh, so while they are decent options, and you, you don't need to socket them, is kind of the uh, the upside. Um, they're just not quite as good, not quite as powerful. 58 to 147. Yeah, I mean, this thing's minimum damage is almost as high as this thing's maximum damage, one-handed. So. Let's see, 214 to 250. I mean, this one wouldn't be a bad uh, two-hander to use, but it kind of pales in comparison one-handed again. So, um, yep, cool. Catch you on the flip side.